Two years ago, I joined in on my first game jam ever with a few friends from college, and after facing many hardships and after 72 hours, we barely managed to have a game that was playable. Through several game jams, I started learning how I can better optimize my time and how I can avoid some pitfalls that you would normally fall in, developing a game in such a short amount of time. Hey there friends, I'm Leo, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips that I learned while making game jams using the Unreal Engine. But do note that all of those tips, they can also be applied to other engines, but but some of the tips that I'm going to give are more specific towards Unreal Engine. As the first point, I have to prototype fast, the whole methodology of fail faster. When working on a game jam, I feel like it's very important that you have a playable build before adding anything else. It all boils down to this phrase I just made up. You need to cook the dough before you add the toppings, otherwise your pizza is gonna be a mess. Imagine that you have this idea of making this fighting game of this dude that can fight really well, so it's a fighting game, good. Now, the first thing that you need to focus on doing is the fighting and the interactions of the player, sure. But after you finish that, should you work on the particle system for when you hit an enemy, or should you start adding enemies first? Or maybe even a stamina system, who knows? The answer is always, it depends. <laughs> What is the thing that is most essential for your game? If you already know how to make a working stamina bar for your player, but not the AI for the enemy, go for the AI first. Having mechanics that you still don't know exactly how you can do them can start to add a lot of pressure as you get less and less time into development. Package your game from the get-go. This was always a big problem for me when I first started because the game works fine in the editor, but when you compile the game and you go to playtest, some of the stuff is not working anymore. And that is sometimes due to some stuff you made on your game mode or some of your project settings, but it is always good to package your game as soon as you have a playable thing right on the beginning. Because imagine that you have only two hours left to publish your game and you are just now compiling it. And then you have this unknown error that you don't know how to fix and you only have now uh, one hour and 30 minutes to fix it. So something like this can really, really cripple you when making a game jam. Then if you have a big problem on your package, you can add that to your priority list of things that you need to fix before release. Most of the problems that you see on game jams all boil down to unknown variables, problems that you don't know how to fix. And fixing those problems beforehand helps alleviate a little bit of all of that pressure. Create your own library of functions. This is something that I found very useful whenever I need to make a game fast. In Unreal, you can make a function or a macro library for things that you use all the time. Here's an example. Something that I use a lot is camera fade and changing of pawns. Let's say that I have a cinematic that is supposed to happen when the player activates a switch. The actor for the cinematic would have a camera and be a pawn, so that when the cinematic happens, I can change the player's camera using a fade. Now here's what the code would look like to fade in, wait one second, and then fade back to the player. We could definitely shrink this down for reusability. Here's what the reduced version looks like using a generic function library. Now just imagine how many things that are specific to you and your workflow you can do by just making some generic functions and keeping them stored for future game gems. I also like to see this as some sort of evolution where you are leveling up through your game gems and you're becoming a little bit more experienced and you're having this sort of uh, sovereignty. It can take a bit of time but it is worth it 100%. And it's also not cheating. This is just you making Unreal a little bit more optimized towards your workflow. Work smarter. Now here's the best tip ever for game jams. Do not overwork yourself. If you're on a game jam that lasts for something like 72 hours, don't try to stay awake all of that time. Otherwise, you will be able to work for about 30 hours and then you're gonna be so tired you can't do anything else. So then a jam that was supposed to be 72 hours becomes something that is only 30 for you. Try to set up a mental chronogram of what things you want to do in what days and also talk about it with your team members and have everything laid out before you start the project. Just to give you a quick example, I recently joined in the Unreal Spring Jam of 2020. I set up a very strict schedule of about 4 hours of sleep, 16 hours of work and 4 hours of rest every day for a week. With that, I was able to perform on all of the mechanics that I wanted to do 
without burning out or feeling like I was going to go insane. Although I did a little bit feel like that sometimes. Take some time to set up a good itch.io page. A couple of days ago, a friend asked me to go on his itch.io page to check out his game. When I went in there, he didn't have any pictures or any text about his game, just the title. I don't want to be rude at all, but how is someone supposed to know what your game is all about if you don't show or you don't tell them? This is why first impressions are important. So important, in fact, that I think every game developer should know a little bit of Photoshop or any image editing software. So take a good couple of hours before you submit your project to make a good landing page with images and text, so when people come check it out, they will actually feel compelled to download your game and to give you feedback, which is the most valuable thing. So things like screenshots, a logo, a banner, maybe a gameplay trailer, a good description, the controls for your game, everything that is special for your game that people wouldn't normally know, should all be on your itch.io page. I'm also planning on making a video where I go a little bit deeper into how exactly you can make this compelling page using things like GIFs and those little banners that separate your text. So if you want to see it, just leave a comment down below. Look for feedback early on. Going back to that first ever game jam that I made, I went back to that game and I really could not figure out how to play it that easily. If I asked for someone to play it before actually publishing the game, I would probably not have these big issues. Because you see, people that are in the brainstorming process of your game, they know how to play because they are a part of the team. So you need to ask for people that are outside of this brainstorming process and the whole development process to be able to judge if the game is concise and if they can understand the game. Of course that as you get more experience, you can kind of tell when your game is easily readable or when your game is a little bit too convoluted and might be hard to play. That's when tutorials come into play as well and all the, the game design experience that you get will make it easier for you going forward. As soon as you have a playable experience, just ask for anyone to play your game. Maybe your dad, your dog, your sister. Just ask them to play and watch how they play it. Now, you will probably feel very compelled to explain how they can play the game, but do not do that. Just wait and see what they will do just instinctively. And this is one of the coolest things about game design is that you need to make your game very readable and very easy to understand. So your game should not need an explanation. There are things that you could explain, stuff like controls and things that would be on tutorials later on, especially because this is a very early prototype. And all of that is going to be a great learning experience for you as a developer. Overall, game jams are these wonderful, wonderful things that can teach you a lot in a very short amount of time in terms of game design, programming, art, everything, you name it. So if you have any tips or knowledge that you learned through your experiences, just comment them down below and I might make a second video on this. Consider subscribing for more game dev tips and devlogs. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I'm Leo, signing off.